Welcome back to another MTMM Radio Coaches Chat, More Than Macros podcast. Um, in the spirit of the holidays, we know that one of the you know common conversations that we're having with clients that we see you know among the community um, are the struggles that can come with the holidays, um, specifically as it relates to you know your goals, nutrition, um, and just trying to enjoy yourself among it all. Um, I know that you know, the holidays are looking a little bit different for us here um, in BC this year, but that's not to say that it doesn't come along with its own struggles. Um, so we're going to kind of walk through a few um, a few tips and tricks that we have for surviving the holidays. Um, and then if you ever feel like you want to reach out or expand on any of these anymore, how they relate to you, please don't hesitate to to reach out to Ben or myself or uh, any of the other MTMM coaches, and we'd be happy to have a chat. Yeah, I want to preface this conversation by saying it's 32 degrees here and I'm wearing a Canadian onesie, so it's pretty hot. Um, but yeah, I've, I've got my notepads here as well because this is a topic that fundamentally gets a lot of airtime um, every year. And it's something that we, we do find ourselves having a lot of conversations with, which is awesome. I think it's great that, that we're in a position with our clients where they realize they can have some of these more challenging conversations. And it can be unpopular sometimes to admit that the festive season makes you anxious, you know? Um, but I think some of the stuff that we're going to talk about, some of the things to keep in mind and, and keep your really front of mind and, and on point um, can help really dispel a lot of that anxiety and, and give you some practical tools to kind of take on the festive season here. Right. Um, obviously for us it, being very food focused, that is where a lot of that anxiety drives from. Um, but probably the first thing I think the, if we look at kind of the most glaring uh, issue that people tend to have is, is going to be the, the Christmas lunch or the Christmas dinner. And, um, you know, for a lot of people going to a family event, they haven't prepared a lot of the food. For some people, it might be really an odd occasion that that occurs for them and, and that's fine. Um, but I think probably the biggest takeaway is that when you've been diligent and learning skills and habits and behaviors over 51 weeks of the year, you're going to be better off than you think during that one week, right? I think a lot of people get too focused on the damage that can be done between Christmas Day and, and New Year's Day, and they forget about how many steps forward they've taken over the last 51 weeks preceding that. Right? And that they can take in the 51 weeks that happen after. Right? Yeah. I mean, look, there's more important things to be doing at holiday time or any other time in the year when you're gathering with um, your close social circle or your family, probably even more so this year. I know here in Melbourne, like there was, it's been a long time that we didn't think that um, we would be up. We haven't seen family for, for eight months. And, and I think there was a lot of pressure on everyone to just try to like stay in lockdown and be compliant and get this done so that we could have Christmas, right? So given the, that kind of build up into this time of year, what a waste of an opportunity to, to really catch up and, and, and relax and, and be with family to, to be stressing about like how much turkey is on your plate or how much gravy is on the mashed potatoes, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think probably the first thing is like, let's just keep everything in perspective. And if we look at it, you know, over the course of a year, like we're not even talking about 1%, right? We're, we're talking about less than 2% of the time for the year. So um, the other thing that you've got to understand too is if you have been on point and you have been working at this for a period of time coming into Christmas, you're going to have a lot of like honed skills that you probably don't even recognize that you have. You're probably pretty accurately going to be able to just look at a plate and have a pretty good idea of, of what you're consuming. If you want to do that, but I'm telling all my clients, if they're track, if they're diligent, like loggers with my fitness pal or chronometer or whatever else, I don't want them logging or tracking on Christmas day. I don't actually want them on their phones at all. You know, I don't want them on Instagram. I don't want them on Facebook. I don't want them on my fitness pal. I want them being present. I want them enjoying the day or the week for what it is, getting the most out of it. And then we can deal with whatever repercussions come, come into January, right? Mm -hmm. Take advantage of the break from work. Take advantage from the gyms being closed for a few days. Take advantage from the fact that, you know, you like here's we're giving you permission as your coaches just take advantage of it enjoy it for what it is spend time with family you know and and then we can deal with whatever the fallout is on the other side right i think that a big thing that that people and i i don't know if this happens more when people know more about nutrition 
Um, or when you still are, are starting to learn more about nutrition and aren't quite sure about, you know, what might be in the different foods that, that you're going to have available. But oftentimes we see that people go into a big Christmas dinner or holiday dinner or just any, you know, social event and look to restrict themselves in the, the earlier hours of the day so that they can go in and gorge, you know, on the Christmas dinner. Um, and I, I think that this, you know, essentially a feast or famine mentality is just not healthy in, in so many ways and be it mentally or physically. So one of my big tips is I also do not want clients tracking their, their Christmas dinner, but I also want them to make sure that they're going into that, that, that meal, that event, that social gathering, whatever it may be feeling full, feeling satisfied, you know, having fed themselves well for the, the, the hours leading up to it as well. And knowing that they can still enjoy that meal to the greatest extent possible um, when they are in it. Um, yeah. We- whether you call it binge and restrict or whether you call it all or nothing or whether you call it restrict and punish, uh, it's a mentality that we don't want you anywhere near at any time of the year, but especially on Christmas. And, and you're right. If you are trying to save all your calories and everything else for the end of the day for that one meal, I guarantee you're going to eat more at that one meal than you would have if you just eaten more regularly, more appropriately during the day and then gone and enjoyed dinner, Right. Um, and even with that kind of the binge side of the restrict, obviously the, the restrict is something we see a lot. The two usually work hand in hand, but like you also don't need to eat like an asshole just because it's Christmas. Like go and eat what you want, but you don't have to go in there with the mentality that I'm going to fill myself up to the point that I feel sick, right? So it doesn't have to be just because you're not tracking that you go completely the other side of the coin right mm-hmm. eat the things that you want to eat get a good spoonful of everything make sure you taste everything and please make sure you have dessert but you don't need to sit there with a bowl or trifle in your hand and eat the whole thing to yourself even though you don't want to actually eat it you don't have to continue eating it right and i think that you know when when people do engage in those types of behaviors i think it comes from this idea of scarcity and that you know when we are so on program and you know borderline being obsessive about what we're always eating and making sure it's always really clean and on program and the right foods, the good foods, this language that we try to avoid at all costs. Um, we go into these types of meals and situations and think, okay, I'm never going to be able to have this again, right? This is a once in a lifetime thing. Once, like once a year, I get to see these foods and I'm never going to be able to have this again or treat myself to these types of things ever again. Um, and that's where, what leads to those, you know, I guess for better, for lack of better words, those binge episodes are, are eating more than, than we're comfortable doing. Um, and I think that type of mentality is managed earlier on, especially if you've been working with, with us or a coach for, for months prior, you start to learn to understand that you still are able to include these types of foods that you love and that you enjoy on, you know, a daily weekly basis. It's not something that we have to exclude, you know, those 51 weeks and then get to only have for that one day. And I think that's a really important lesson. That's important to learn leading up to these holidays as well. Um, is that you can make whatever you want fit, right? And we have a, an MTM radio episode on how much Ben loves ice cream and his, um, how he manages to fit that in, you know, um, when he wants to, and it doesn't necessarily feel like, you know, you're, you have to restrict yourself from it. Um, but just understanding when you really do want it and going about it the right way. Um, yeah. That's kind of this mentality shift that's, that's difficult to do, but I think a really important one to be aware of is that this food is, is not something that you're never going to be able to get your hands on again. Yeah. And I, I think, look, it's okay to go in with the goal that you're going to be sensible and everything else, and then ultimately get carried away. And that's okay as well. You know, what is not okay is then spending the next four days, you know, again, on that restrict side of a binge, trying to make up for it or trying to punish yourself for being bad. You're not bad, right? You just overly indulge. That's fine. Don't do anything drastic to try to make up for it. Just get more back to your more regular patterns and habits, whatever they may be. And things will kind of prolong and, and, and fall out, you know, come out in the wash as, as they should. Like why anyone wants to jump on the scales on Boxing Day morning is, is absolutely beyond me. Like what, what, what good is going to come of that? You know, we, we've told you to indulge. You know you're going to indulge. Chances are you're going to be eating a lot of things that you don't normally eat. Chances are you're going to be eating a lot more carbs than you probably regularly eat unless you're M. Rolf, right? Um, and so there's going to be a lot of things shifting and affecting scale weight and measurements and stuff like that, that, that aren't necessarily going to be indicative of body composition changes. So just like, don't even, don't even go there. Don't even go there. Give yourself a couple of days, get back to more like regular eating, regular activity, and then we can continue on with whatever our goal might be for that individual. Okay. Cause like we said, right, this restrict and punish, it's a cycle. 
So yeah. if after the holidays, we then go back to restricting ourselves, we can only expect that it's the next holiday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or mm-hmm. even like say, okay, boxing day, we feel terrible, guilty from, from what we ate Christmas day that now, okay, we're going to eat, you know, 200 calories, or we're going to not eat all day, or we're going to, you know, restrict ourselves uh-huh. for the day. Then the, yeah. the 27th, you're going to be right back to where you were on Christmas day. Right. And it's just this cycle that's really difficult to break. So getting back to your, you know, consistent, comfortable intake, you know, eating what, you know, feels good for your body, um, and exercising, same thing, exercising the way that, you know, feels good for your body, not going on an extra long run to try and make up for Christmas dinner or anything like that. Just going back into your regular routine is going to be the best thing that you can do to get yourself back on track after the holidays. I'm, I'm a big fan of, you know, that, that week, it tends to be like no man's land, right? Like that kind of Christmas Eve to like new year's day. It's like, no, one's really kind of sure what day it is. Um, you know, day of the week or date, right? Um, I think that, you know, if you're a member of this community, chances are you've at one point worked on developing a routine that's serving and positive towards, you know, the achievement of whatever it is that you you are trying to, to work towards and accomplish. So I think that sticking to that routine, even in that no man's land period can be super beneficial, right? If you can still get your activity in, whatever it is, awesome, go for it. But don't feel like you need to do that because of what's happened on an intake front, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a mentality that's that we try to absolutely denounce and, and get rid of at all times of the year, not just at the festive season, but it's probably always more, um, again, like front of mind at the festive. And I think that that kind of ties into to why that might be is, the next point, which inevitably comes up when you catch up with family members that you haven't seen for, for a long period of time is there are going to be people at your family event that feel it's their place to comment on A, how you look, B, what you're wearing, or C, what you're choosing to put on your plate, right? We've or all not them. put on your plate. Or not put on your plate. Why aren't right? you having the mashed potatoes? Oh, is it because, you know, there's carbs? Uh, are you allowed to have these on your diet? Well, if, if that's what they're saying, give them our business card because, like, those people, <laughs> right? Um, but a, a lot of that mentality, like let that just be a shining light to you all. If that's kind of the stuff that you're facing that, that is the general population and the general population don't have a clue. And that's why we are seeing like the, the health implications and issues within the community that we're seeing, you know, um, because there is always that like, oh, needing to restrict or, you know, cutting things out for you. That's what people think diet means. Right. And. Um, as much as we're trying to correct that, we still have a lot of work to do, right? There's still a lot of people in there that, that haven't heard our podcast, Mags, unfortunately. Um, yeah. If you have one of those relatives that, that has, instead of letting it affect what you're doing or, or letting yourself get upset, just shoot them this episode of the podcast to have a listen to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then change the subject, you know, brush it off and, and get back to, you know, more meaningful conversation with yeah. family and friends, right? Something that actually matters to talk about with them. Go and sit, go over and sit with the relatives you actually enjoy catching up with. Yeah, yeah. Um, I get, sorry. What people choose to say or how they choose to interpret what's going on is always gonna be a reflection of what they're thinking about themselves more than it is actually a question of what you're doing. So if someone's feeling a little bit self-conscious about the COVID-15 or something like that, particularly this Christmas, they're probably the ones that are more likely to say something to you about it. So keep that front of mind as well, right? Yeah. Um, And I think, you know, when it comes to a practical note, if you, if you are thinking about how, you know, you want your plate to look, you know, just focus on, on the simple things. And and we have an episode on that too, you know, the the top five things to focus on um, to keep top of mind for your health. And that's things like protein, making sure that there's some sort of protein on your plate, making sure there's a good amount of veggies covered in butter or not, make sure that they, they make their way onto your plate stay hydrated, you know, just these very simple things or seemingly simple things are going to go a really long way um, on days like Christmas and, and New Year's and everything like that too. Yeah, I think even, you know, small things like if you set up your plate and sit down next to someone that you do like catching up with, um, you're more likely to converse more and talk more. So you eat a little bit more slowly as well and kind of give your, you know, ghrelin and leptin a chance to let your brain know, okay, we're, we're starting to get full as opposed to just like we said, kind of gorging and, and, and going crazy over the top right Mm -hmm. um so those are just some some little hacks there um i think the other one mag so i'm just referring to my notes here and you just kind of mentioned it just yeah keeping it simple Mm -hmm. um you know what your plates look like generally right obviously they're probably going to be a a little bit 
heavier and a little bit bigger over the, over the festive season. Um, and that, like we said, that's fine. It's expected. And as long as it's something that we're expecting and anticipating, then so is the outcome of whatever happens from those actions as well. All yeah. Right? Um, maybe not so much this year, but, but another one that normally gets a lot of people is uh, just how many events are usually on at this time of year, right? And it's, sometimes it's not just like the Christmas lunch, but it's like the gym Christmas party and the work Christmas party and then this side of the family and then that side of the family and then maybe there's a group of friends and it kind of goes from like one big social occasion to like 10 or 12 a couple a week. And um, what we see often derails people is that they're only ever three or four days away from the next like big night, right, in terms of booze. So um, with, if that's the case, if, if that's a, you know, maybe not this year again, but maybe next year when, when you do have kind of those events, picking and choosing the ones that you actually legitimately want to go to as like your bigger designated events can, can make the whole kind of season a lot more manageable as well. Um, and kind of giving yourself permission that it's okay to go to a social event and not drink 10 beers, right? Um, you can go for a drink, pay your respects and, and then kind of like call it a night to save yourself for those ones that do mean the most amount to you, that you do, you know, prioritize over the top, right? Yeah, definitely. And I think reflecting on each event after it happens too is really important. Um, how did you feel, you know, what decisions did you make that you were happy with? What what maybe would you want to change next time? Um, and not reflecting on it in a way to to get down on yourself or or you know have any regrets or anything like that, but just reflecting on it as a whole, um, how you enjoyed how you enjoyed the the event in itself, right, and the experience, and applying that to 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 ones coming up. Yeah, love it. Um, and then the last one is having a plan in place for after the holidays. So we kind of touched on this. Um, earlier on, but I think it's it's really important to to be able to enjoy that you know that one week out of the year, knowing that you're going to spend the next weeks, months, you know, year, whatever it may be, continuing to work towards your goals, um, and not that you know if you if you take this one week off, it means that you know you're you're never going to reach your goals or never going to have a plan in place. Um, yeah. Kind of like the rest day mentality, right? Like how many people do we do we work with that are like scared to take a day off the gym because they fear they're going to lose their gains when in actual fact, like having a day or two off a week actually means that you get more out of the training sessions that you have. It's a very similar concept here. Um, chances are your ability to be quite compliant and, and um, feeling really good during the year are because we're having times like this where we're saying, let's back it right off in terms of, you know, um, putting yourself through the roof and just kind of enjoy this this time and, and, and enjoy you know, a little bit of a refeed and a little bit of a relaxed. You know, it's good recovery, honestly. Yeah. Um, and I think I know for a lot of our community in general, um, CrossFit opens on the horizon in, in kind of towards the end of Feb. So this is probably going to be really the last kind of chance to have a week of just kind of cruising and enjoying it before the ramp up really begins, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so that's definitely something that I would, I would, uh, keep in mind and, and yeah, you're right. Um, the plan is generally after you've had the week off that you feel that kind of supercharge to want to get back into it. Right. Yeah. Um, awesome. And, and capitalizing on that, that motivation is super important. If you've been working, you know, with us or you're a member of this community, it's going to be more of a, just like getting back to it more than like this big overhaul. Um, and if you're not, if you're only new to the community, then, uh, that's probably something that you want to reach out and, and kind of touch base to. Right? Yeah. I, um, I like to say that, you know, when we're putting in that, that effort or, or any effort, I guess it's effort that excites us. And mm -hmm. if we were to, you know, come into the holidays and decide to, to want to be perfect with our macros for every day during the holidays, the li likelihood of that exciting us is going to be quite slim. But afterwards when we're, you know, getting back into the swing of things, putting in that effort is really going to excite us. We're going to be working to something towards something new. Um, we're going to have just enjoyed ourselves, spend time with family and friends and everything like that. And it's really going to excite us to, to, to want to put in that effort. So let's pick our battles. Let's choose when and where, you know, we want to really put in that effort and, and in what way and what that's going to look like. And um, yeah, enjoy the ride. Yeah. Enjoy the break. Enjoy the time with family. Um, again, given the year that we've just had probably more so than usual, even if that means that you're having Christmas dinner for one over a zoom call with, with those you're closest to make the most of it. And then, yeah, you just get back, back to it as soon as possible. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Got a little hot over there. Did it? <laughs> I'm, sweating. I'm sweating. Like I've just sat down and had too many Christmas dinners. <laughs> 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 no, 
Thanks. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll leave it there. But again, if anybody has any questions or is feeling anxious about the holidays and wants to have a chat, please feel free to reach out um, to Ben or myself or, or any of the MTM coaches, and, and we'd be happy to to walk you through it. Yeah, or any other tips as well. If there's a trick or a hack that you've been that, that makes you um, crush the holiday season, share it with the rest of us. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, thanks for listening and we'll look forward to, to seeing you in the next one and happy holidays, everybody. Thanks.